What's going on folks? Hope you're having a wonderful night or day. Today I'm going to be bringing you seven tips that I learned in the early game of Nightingale and ones that I wish that I had learned ahead of time. I'm going to try to avoid any story spoilers, but fair warning, I will be talking about some cool gadgets you get later on in the main story, so if you don't want to hear about that, you might want to close this now. I want to start this off quick and easy. First tip is going to be to pick up everything, which I know is kind of obvious, but here's the thing. This is going to tie into making sure that you always have three types of food, plenty of sacrifice material for essence, and help you keep stock of some of the rare resources you're going to need for later stages of crafting. So this is going to be kind of a big parter. First things first, why do I need three types of food, you're asking? What is essence, etc.? Well, on the food side, you have three slots. You can eat three types of similar foods, such as three types of meat. They can't be the same exact meat, though. Or you can eat three types of plants, or you can mix and match. Meat will normally give you more maximum HP and health recovery, and the plants will be more tied to your stamina. There's a tool called Climbing Picks, for example, and it allows you to traverse different obstacles in the realms or inside of different puzzle areas. And for something like this, for example, I would recommend keeping three types of plant foods to eat so that you can have as much stamina as possible because it does use up a lot. Whereas in a boss fight, you may want to mix and match with maybe two types of meat and one type of plant food. And then as far as essence goes, this is something you can use to upgrade your gear, trade with essence traders, which those are NPCs in the world that can give you crafting recipes or resources in exchange for essence. Each realm and each difficulty of the realm will have its own type of essence trader and stuff that you can buy from it. So that means if you go into a gear score 20 forest, the stuff that you can buy is going to be different from a gear score 20 desert and vastly different from a gear score 60 desert. Essence is also used for repairing your gear, not just upgrading, and there's different tiers to it. The one that we start off using first is essence dust not sure about the later stages of the game but at least right now even when you get past gear score 20 you still use it to repair that gear and then you have tier 1 essence which is what you'll be using to upgrade your baseline gear haven't gotten a tier 2 essence yet can't tell you about that but tier 1 and tier 2 will also be used for unlocking some of the more advanced crafting recipes something else you want to take note of when it comes to this tip is to save your hide and kill everything that you see when it comes to this the bound too because they can drop resources as well but for the hide this will help you with crafting tools early on you need to craft straps from a leatherworking station to make them, so saving as many as you can very early on is going to help you a lot in the long run. And in addition to this, you can dismantle items and resources for essence that you can use for the stuff we mentioned before. So when you're at an essence trader, you can go around gathering sticks and rocks, or my favorite, go gather a bunch of wood logs when you get an axe, make it into lumber at a sawmill, which you'll be able to craft later in the story. And then with the lumber, you'll be able to craft that into paper. The cool thing about paper is that it's really light. So not only is it a good resource that you can carry on you at all times in case you need to sacrifice to be able to repair your gear, but the amount of essence that you get from it is a very good return. When you craft paper you get multiples of it at a time more than you get from the lumber that you put in and each paper can give you at least one to two essence per sacrifice so right now it's one of my top favorite methods for generating essence because it's just so easy to work with tip number two utilize your companions i'm talking about their inventory their equipment everything they get and make them a pickaxe as soon as possible so they can help you fight the bound efficiently actually not sure if that makes a difference to be honest but there is a resistance system in the game so if you fight a wolf or a boar with a blunt weapon it's not going to do as much damage as with slashing and from what i've seen the bound seemed to take more damage against blunt not sure if the companions can utilize this too but my first one took forever when it came to helping me kill the bound and my second one seemed to have a vast improvement when i finally made him a pickaxe you'll be able to find your first companion very early on just by exploring around make sure to keep an eye out for dynamic events on the map that you'll see that will involve aiding NPCs or defending them. You can also go around recruiting these companions and taking their gear to dismantle with to get free essence, or you can keep it as backup for later companions that you'll be working with. And in a cosmetic sense, which I should have been doing, if you like the look of the piece, you can keep that too, but as far as I've seen, you should be able to upgrade these just like you can for the regular pieces. Tip number three, you can take over makeshift bases. Sorry about that, that's my little one I'm holding on right now. If, if you're not into building or you want a forward operating base inside the realm you're exploring, you can do this by simply placing an estate item down. And I think even the ones you help build when it comes to the aid dynamic event, you can take over as well by doing the same thing. You'll be able to use all the benches that are already inside of it, all the storage areas, the beds, everything. So it could also save you resources alongside being a fully fleshed out base that's already there for you. And if it's a very defensive one, like built in the other realms, for example, I haven't seen those yet, that could be even better too. Tip number four, explore. There's rewards, there's secrets, there's everything. There's gonna be dynamic events on the map just like this that you can fight the bound in to gain crafting schematics, hope, items, and gear from the various chests scattered around the realms, which will also have minor cards you can play before you even have the ability to craft them. Which by the way, you do get the recipe to craft them from those essence traders, but if you go around the map doing these dynamic events, you'll start to unlock most of, if not all the ones you're looking for, 
when it comes to the crafting recipes you can buy from them. And sometimes you'll even encounter hidden portal locations that'll lead you into puzzle areas for great rewards. Just make sure you don't leave them before you're done like I did because then you might not be able to come back in. Tip number five, the travel to respite button, portals, realmic transmuters, and the fairy ring. So about six to seven hours into your gameplay and helping out Mr. Puck, you're going to start getting access to different quality of life structure recipes that he himself is going to provide for you. The travel to rest by button I believe we get from the moment we step into game, although I didn't know it until like three hours in, and it allows you to transport yourself back to your base in the abeyance realm, which is the realm that you start in. Now there's different types of realms and that's a system all in its own that's complex and awesome, but the abeyance one is the realm that's like the green zone. The bound don't attack your base here, at least not in the early stages from what I've seen, but also the creatures and animals are on a lower level than they are in the other realms. You can also choose from the beginning what type of abeyance realm you want to be in. You could be in a desert, a swamp, or a forest, but any way you slice it, it's going to have lower tiers of mobs and animals available to you as opposed to when you get into the higher realms. And the travel to rest by button will allow you to traverse across those realms to come back to your base in the abeyance one. But I did some testing and if you place an estate in a new realm like a level 20 gear score forest realm and then you delete the estate in your abeyance realm, your starter realm, what's going to happen is you're not going to have that forest estate as a new respite. It's going to teleport you back to the abeyance realm but it'll put you in like a more standard default position than the base that you had in there before. So that's essentially what the bases in the other realms are is FOBs, forward operating bases. So make sure to take that with a grain of salt. But alongside being able to build portals, you'll be able to build your own Realmic Transmuters. So these are devices that you can use to play minor cards, which I'll be going into in just a second. But instead of having to go to the default location in your realm that has it, you can play it right from your base. And then lastly, the other cool one that I came across so far is the Fairy Ring. And this one allows you to set your respawn point in the realm, because when you die, you'll spawn at the nearest one. And instead of having to respawn all the way back at your Abeyance Realm base, it will put you at one of these Fairy Rings instead. Also a good tip is that if you destroy a fairy ring or another building entirely in a build mode, you should get all the resources back. So if you want to build a fairy ring somewhere that you're gonna be exploring in, you can take the one from your base and you'll have the mats to build it over there. To get into the build menu to make sure you can destroy stuff and get all the materials back, all you gotta do is press X. Tip number six is run different minor cards before boss fights and use various potions and make sure you have three types of foods and a companion. So when I say boss fight, there are these dynamic events spread throughout the map that will have these tower structures in which you can delve into and at the end usually you'll come across a boss. Or when you get to the higher realms, you'll find apex creatures, which are the ones normally recommended for a group of Nightingale players, but you may be able to solo with tips like this. So I already gave a baseline explanation, but when it comes to Nightingale, your job is to traverse through different realms. In the game, you're cut off from the city of Nightingale, which acts as the portal network and also the central hub for all realm walkers alike. When you build portals or you go to the default portals that are located throughout these different realms, you'll be able to play major cards. And then based on the cards you play alongside them, you can choose the difficulty, also known as the gear score range. You can also change the difficulty in that menu alongside being able to play different cards that affect it, but I haven't played around with that too much yet. The minor cards is where it gets a little bit more interesting. These are cards you can play at the Realmic Transmuters throughout the realm that give you different bonuses like being able to safely fall from great heights, or being able to find more essence on mob drops, gathering, stuff like that, even taking less damage from all sources in exchange for doing less damage, or plunging your realm into eternal darkness with lightning, but it increases your magic damage in the process. There's all kinds of them even some for farming and fishing, Eternal Daylight, which I think may actually be a major card, but don't quote me on that, and these can provide serious benefits when it comes to taking on bosses. Case in point, in the Abeyance biome, the one that you start with, there is a dynamic event called Herbarium, I believe, and when you delve into this dungeon, at least in the current version I'm playing ahead of time, the boss is at the top of the tower, but they're very easily capable of knocking you off. While playing the Thin Veiled Minor card, which allows you to fall safely from distance, like I mentioned, of course having three types of food will also help, but a companion can body block for you or distract them while you dish out some damage, which all three combined should come in very handy for taking these bosses and Apex Predators down. And then the seventh and final tip is related to crafting and upgrading. Something you want to know about Nightingale is it has a very intricate crafting system and all the resources that you can get from the different realms, whether it's forest, swamp, desert, they each have their own different version of that resource. And as you get to the higher stages, you'll notice that those also have their own versions of tiers and resources as well. And the cool thing is, as far as I've seen, you can use those higher tier resources on lower level gear. So something I would recommend keeping in mind early on is that if you're planning to upgrade a piece with tier one essence, like I mentioned towards the beginning of this video, 
video or you're planning to craft a new piece of gear in general, you might want to take a look across the different realms you have access to to see if there's any different kinds of materials you can come across and see what the stat difference is for using those materials instead of the ones that you currently have. This allows you to mid-max your build so that you can be as efficient as possible, but also waste less resources. Also, when it comes to the dynamic event towers I mentioned, they do have gear score requirements, but early on you can use a little trick. So to get gear score increases, your main way is going to be by upgrading gear, but early on in the story you'll get access to a spyglass, and that by default, unless it gets changed, comes with a gear score of 41. I was able to pretty much completely bypass a barrier entry at one of those dynamic events, but the only thing is you'll want to make sure to bring your A game because if you get inside of one of those and then you put back on your regular gear, those mobs may end up being a little bit too over leveled for you, but it'll be completely worth it if you can make your way through. Also, the first time you upgrade the spyglass, it goes up to 61 gear score, whereas the baseline crafted gear is only 20 and goes up to 40 after the first upgrade. Also save the charms, mostly the infusions that you get, because that can boost up the gear score too. Thank you guys so much for joining me on this video. I hope you have a wonderful night or day. Happy realm walking, and I'll see you out there.